All right, this is AP, AB, and BC Calc. We are doing Unit 1, Section 5, which is determining limits using algebraic properties of limits. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about uh, how we can find uh, limits using sums, differences, products, quotients, composite functions, and all that good stuff. All right, so properties of limits, hints they behave like numbers, so most of the time that's pretty helpful, right? So let b and c be real numbers, and let n be a positive integer with f and g uh, being functions that adhere to the following limits. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x uh, is l, meaning the output would be l, and the limit as x approaches c of g of x uh, is k. So if you multiply a limit by a number, by a scalar, right, uh, then you just multiply the, the answer by that number, right? So uh, for instance, the limit as x approaches c of some constant b times f of x would just be b times the output of the limit, right? If you add or subtract limits, you just add or subtract their values, right? Um, if you multiply two, two values inside a limit, then you just multiply the values. And if you divide two, two functions inside a limit, you just do the division of their limit values uh, with the caveat that you can't divide by zero. So k, this number down here, can't be zero. Uh, and lastly, if you put a power onto a function, like f of x to the nth, then you would just get whatever the limit value is of f of x at c, which is l to the n. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some limit stuff. All right, so I've given you four limit values at the top in example one. We have the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 equals 3. The limit of g of x as x approaches 2 is negative 2. The limit of f of x as x approaches 5 is negative 7. And the limit of g of x as x approaches 5 is 4. So let's do the limit as x approaches 5 of f plus g. So if you need to write this out, you can, right? If you need to write that this is the same as the limit as x approaches 5 of f plus the limit as x approaches 5 of g, that's great. If you need that, by all means, do it, and then look up at the table and find those two values and get negative 7 plus 4, which gives you a negative 3. But if you were able to skip from here to here, nobody thinks that's cheating. So here uh, we have the limit as x approaches 2 of the quantity f of x minus g of x, right? And if you need to split this up into two limits, right? If you need to make this the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x minus the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x, you can. That's absolutely fine. And then you can look at the values up in the table. You get a 3 minus a negative 2, which is a 5. But again, if you can skip from here to here, nobody thinks you're cheating. All right, so... Next one, we have the limit as x approaches 2 of a 10 times f of x plus a 3 times g of x. So again, if you're able to jump to realizing that this is 10 times that f of x limit plus 3 times that g of x limit, right? If you're able to jump to this being a 30 minus a 6, which is a 24, that's great. And that's totally fine. And that's, that's not an issue, right? If you do need to write this as 10 times the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, plus 3 times this limit as x approaches 2 of g of x to get to that spot, that's also fine, right? It, it doesn't matter if you need it. Uh, so I'm not going to write this notation for the remaining ones because I think we get the gist of it, right? So now we're using x as 5, so be, be heads up about that. So we're using the negative 7 and the 4. So this is an 8 times a negative 7 minus a 2 times a 4. And if you're able to jump to that, that's fine, right? So this is a negative 56 minus an 8, which is a negative 64 right? Um, limit as x approaches 5 of f times g, well, that's going to be the f limit at 5 times the g limit at 5. So I'm going to get a negative 28, right? And then limit as x approaches 2 of f over g, well, I'm using the 2s again, and it's the f on top of the g. So that's going to be a 3 over negative 2, which is great. If you want to write it as a decimal, you certainly can, but I would suggest that it's easier to leave it as a fraction. All right, so I'm going to give you a p1 to try. Same idea. Pause me if you don't want me to do it. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches 3, which means I'm using these two over here. f plus g would be the 6 plus the 10, so I'm going to get a 16. Again, this is the level of work you would be expected to show. If you need to show this level of work for yourself, that's also totally fine. Uh, now I'm using the negative 1 values because this x approaches negative 1, and it's f minus g, so that's going to be a 9 minus a negative 4, which is going to be a 13, right? Uh, now I'm again using those negative 1 values, which is these two right here. I want 2 times the f of x limit plus 5 times the g of x limit. So that's an 18 minus a 20 or a negative 2. Uh, 3 times, so now I'm using the x equals 3, or x approaches 3, which is these two. 3 times the f of x limit uh, minus the g of x limit would be an 18 minus a 10, so that's an 8. 
right? I'm using the x approaching 3, which is these two, and I want f times g, which is going to give me a 60. And then I'm using the negative 1 values again, which is these two, and I want the f on top of the g. So that answer is great. Uh, again, if you want to make this uh, a negative 2.25, you certainly can, but I would recommend that you not do any more math than you have to. Okay, so now let's combine some skills that we know, because that's always good for us. So given the graph of f of x, so this is f, and a table with some values for g, we're going to evaluate some limits, okay? So honestly, and you don't have to do this, but I would suggest if you look, all these are talking about x approaching 4 and x approaching 2. If I were you, I would go ahead and find the four basic limits that we're going to have to use. I would find the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x using the graph. I would find the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x using the table. I would find the limit as x approaches 4 from the graph. And I would find the limit as x approaches 4 from the table. Again, you don't have to do this, but if you think about it, if you looked at these problems and thought, hey, Hogan, that's really easy, you gave me the numbers, Great, this is the same question, but I'm just not giving you the numbers. I'm giving you the data in a, a graphical depiction that you're going to have to pay attention to, right? So let's go ahead and walk through this. So let's start with, with uh, 2. So here's, here's where x is 2 on the graph, right? The double-sided limit does not exist here, right? This is a DNE, right? Because, because this left-sided limit is going to negative 2. The right-sided limit is going to a positive 3. Those are not the same. It doesn't exist. If we look at what happens at x equals 4, this limit does exist, right? As x approaches 4, the graph has a value of 1. So, so we've got those right away. If we then do the same thing with the table, right? Um, so as we approach 2 on the table, the left and right limits are both approaching 15. And you can see that because uh, we have a 15, values getting closer and closer to 15, and then land at 15, values getting closer and closer to 15. So on the table, as we approach 2, we're approaching a 15. And on the, the table, as we approach 4, it seems like both sides are approaching the number 12, right? These numbers are getting lower to get to 12, and these numbers are getting higher to get to 12, so this is a 12. So now that I know those values, a couple things are happening. The first thing I notice is that anything that involves x approaching 2 and f of x is going to be does not exist. Because if you try to add does not exist to a 15, you get does not exist. You're adding something that's non-existent. The answer can't possibly exist, right? By the same token, if I take 3 times a non-existent thing, that's going to be a does not exist, right? Because 3 times a number that's not a number does not exist, right? Uh, it's sort of like if I ask you if you have a brother and you tell me no, and then I say, what's your brother's name? You'd look at me like I'm crazy, right? Your brother doesn't exist, so he can't have a name. Well, this limit doesn't exist, so it can't have a numerical value. All right. Uh, so if we do the other two, though, limit as x approaches 4 of f minus g, well, again, we did all the legwork already. We know that's just going to be a 1 minus a 12, which is a negative 11, right? So if you do all the legwork to figure out the limits ahead of time, it's a lot easier. And then a 4 times, um, uh, sorry, uh, the limit as x approaches 4 of 10 times the g limit, well, that's going to be 10 times the 12, which is going to be a buck 20, all right? So again, I would highly suggest that you do the legwork first, and then you can answer the questions really easily. Let's go on to the next one. Same idea, you can pause me if you want. Um, again, I, I want to point out that you'll notice that the two values we're approaching are negative 2 and 1, and that if you find those four limits, uh, the limit as both f and g approach those two values, you should be able to answer all the questions really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and find the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the graph. I'm going to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the table. I'm going to find the limit... Oh, sorry, not negative 1, negative 2. Come on, brain. Sorry, they're negative two. I just, I don't know, my brain's not quick. Uh, limit as x approaches one from uh, the graph and the limit as x approaches one from the table. All right, there we go, cool. Okay, so uh, let's start with the graph, right? On the graph, uh, here's where negative two is. Both the left and right guys seem to be walking to a y value of zero, right? On the table at negative two, this one is walking to a five, but this one is walking to a negative nine, so this one does not exist right? Um, the graph at 1, here's 1, both the left and right dude are walking to a y value of 4, and on the table, both the left and right seem to be walking to a negative 7. So first thing I notice is anything that has g of x at negative 2 is going to be does not exist. So here's my negative 2, there's my g of x, this is a does not exist, right? Um, 5 times f of x as we approach negative 2 is going to be a 5 times 0, which is just a 0, right? 
Uh, as we approach 1, f minus g is going to be f. Oh, if we stick to the colors I was using, it'll be red. f minus the negative 7, so I get an 11, right? And then negative 6 times g is going to be a negative 6 times a negative 7, which is going to be a 42. Cool beans? All right. So let's talk about the limits of composite functions. So remember from way back when in like algebra two, right? Uh, sometimes you've seen composite functions looking like this, f of g of x. What that actually means though, and what we see it as more in, in daily mathing is f outside g of x, f with g on the inside, okay? So let's say that the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x, that's the same as saying uh, that it's the function evaluated at whatever that limit would be, the limit as x approaches a of g of x. So if we know that g of x has some value, let's say l, then the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x is the function f at that limit value, which means f of l. So let's walk through that, right? So we're given the same graph. This is the same basic idea of the ones we've done before, but we're asked about finding f of g of x and g of f of x. All right, so this is the limit as x approaches, oh, sorry. I wrote it backwards. Come on, Bray. This is f of the limit as x approaches negative 2 of g of x. So let's start there. Let's look for this limit. Well, as x approaches negative 2 from both sides, we seem to be approaching a value of 2. So this is just f of 2. When I look at f of 2, it's a 1, right? That's just, that's an algebra scale, right? f of 2 is a 1. Okay, let's try the next thing. Right? So this one is going to be f of the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. Well, now let's look at what g of x is approaching. So when I approach from both sides here, I seem to be approaching a 0. So that's an f of 0. Well, f of 0 seems to be a y value of 2. Now we're going to do the opposite direction. Okay, So now we're going to go ahead and plug in g of f. Right, So this is going to be g of the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x. So now I need to find that limit. So I go to negative 3. Here's negative 3. And it seems to me like both of these are approaching a y value of negative 2. So that's g of negative 2. Well, g of negative 2 is a 2. Right? Um, and then for the last one, this is g of the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. Right? Well, Here's negative 1, and the y value that we seem to be approaching at negative 1 on the graph is a 1. So that's g of 1, which seems to be a 0. And there you have it. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and try uh, a p3, and that'll be the end of this video. So again, pause me if you want. It's the same concept as the ones we just did. So this is going to be f of the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x. So I look at my g of x. I see what's happening as x approaches 0. Both of these sides seem to be approaching a negative 3. So that's f of negative 3. I then look at the graph. And at negative 3, the y value is 1. OK, the next one we're going to do uh, is f of and the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. Well, let's look at what's happening to g of x as we approach 1. When I approach from both of these sides, they seem to be both approaching a 0. So this is f of 0, which seems to be a 4. OK, now let's do the reverse order. We'll do g of f. So this is g of the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x. So let's see what's happening as we approach negative 2 on the graph. So here's negative 2 on the graph. It seems to be a 0. So they're saying, what's g of 0? And g of 0 seems to be a negative 3. And then last but not least, this is g of the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. So let's look at what on the graph, what's happening at negative 1? Well, at negative 1, we're approaching a y value of 1. So this is g of 1, which is a 0. Okay. Now notice, if at any point any of the limits had not existed, then I can't evaluate the function at a non-existent number. So if, for instance, one of these limits, let's just pretend this limit, if this had been d and e, then this answer would be does not exist. Like, I can't do that math, right? All right, that's the, that's the gist of uh, one, uh, unit 1, section 5.